We are live. We are live. Let some of you guys come in. Hey, Pam. All right, I'm going to bring in Talia Farrow. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hello. All right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you well. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So right now we have 14 people in, so awesome. we'll let it build up. I did put a note in the top. I hope everybody can see that. Can you see the um, comments? Yeah, I see. Look, oh, let me see. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Wow. The love is real. Y'all know that's my favorite statement, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the comments. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Because I didn't know if that was, I know I had asked you about that a couple of days ago. I didn't know if you guys could see that. Like you could see it. Yeah, we can, I can see it. And what we do is we just have to make sure that we save this recording after it's done. Yes, I'm going to save it. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something that's probably going to be a little bit corny. <laughs> okay. It's but awesome. when I did my live with Pam and I was saving the video, I realized that we didn't really do a screenshot. So okay. that's kind of like, I don't know, funny about that. So, you know, if we take a nice little screenshot like a little freeze frame, I could use that as like the thumbnail, like the picture, you know, so it like would you know, be looking goofy. We could do that. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Right. I love I love how you your ensemble over there. Thank I you. That. I love that. Yes. I had to switch it up for the new year. <laughs> I got tired of the old uh shelving that I had. Is when I started YouTube, which was probably maybe two years. Ago. Well, actually, I've been had a YouTube channel, but I never used it. Mm -hmm. And so when I started doing fragrance re reviews, I started like two years ago, I think. So I had been using the same kind of background for a long time. And so I kind of wanted to switch it up. My next thing I'm going to work on is lighting. Lighting in videos is ultra important. <laughs> Like, it could totally set the mood for your video, you know. So I like the lighting right now that I'm getting on Instagram, which is what I want to create on my YouTube channel. Because it looks more natural, you yeah. know. Yeah. Thank you, like Pam. That. What's up, Pam? Trini that's the Trini fan right there. <laughs> yeah. So you in New Jersey, right? I am in New Jersey. East Orange, New Jersey. Okay. That's where you from? Uh, actually, yep. Yeah. No, uh, one, one of the places that Cicely Tyson, Cicely Tyson is raised in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I saw you uh, created a fragrance for her. Yeah. So it was actually something I dedicated to her after her passing away. It was more so just something that I wanted to commemorate to her legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's cool. It's a whole interesting story behind that. And, yeah. You know, I'm not going to go into it right now. I want to, you know, but you can ask me more about this, more to that. Yeah, I'll ask you before we get off about the that fragrance and what inspired that fragrance. Okay, so we have 16 people in now. So I guess we should do like a little introduction. Since you're my guest, I will let you introduce yourself and let let us know a little bit more about you. I, I kind of want to know what your real name is. <laughs> 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 is, okay. is that is that a, allowed? Is that something you tell the public, like your real name? So my real name is Hakeem Telefowl. Okay. And my name, my first name, Hakeem, means King of the Wise. Okay. Also a doctor, and I really embrace that because I am a doctor, and um, I use that with my fragrances and all the other things that I do. Okay. As far as solving problems. 
The Telefaro is my real last name. That's actually the name of the company. It's the Telefaro. The Telefaro in Italian actually means iron cut. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So, you know, we want to know all the goods. We want to get all into your business. How did you start getting into fragrances? Like, what brought that on? You know, because I know it was a moment where you probably was like, all right, I have something here. How did that happen? Oh, man. So, you, you want me to start off with the introduction, talk about how I started? Well, no, you can keep telling us about yourself. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Because I'm nosy. You know, I want to know everything. Okay, hold on. Before we do that, right, you have to, we got to, I got to know more about you because you have been such a blessing in my life. And uh -huh. I want to first start off by saying thank you for letting me even be here and allowing me to share the product that I created from my heart with your audience. And, um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I, so I'm thankful for you first. I just wanted to make sure I say that. And uh, you're you. welcome. It's, it's really an honor for me because you're actually the first perfumer that I've interviewed. So, you know, I feel like this is a first. I'm hoping this is a first of many yes, to come. I so. I yeah, so. definitely. I definitely. So. so you want to know about me? Yeah. Tell us, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm from Texas. Okay. Born and raised. Been here all my life. Um I have a daughter. She's 27. Um, I've always loved fragrances. It's just something that, to see, okay, you got to know a little bit about my family. So my mom has six sisters, okay? And her mom is has since passed. But it was something about the women, you know, they always had this thing where you couldn't leave the house looking a certain kind of way. You know, you always had to have your hair done. You always had to, you know, not that they were big in the makeup like me, but mm -hmm. you had to present yourself in a certain way. So by doing that, I got into makeup, hair, and then um, I had an aunt who was into perfume. Now, she was, she was the aunt that, and a lot of us have this aunt in their family that have never been married. You know, she show up to Thanksgiving with the yeah. best macaroni and cheese. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Fur coat, everything. Fur coat, the diamonds <laughs> and all that. So, you know, I was really, really intrigued by that, you know. And I used to go over to her house and I used to always, like, go through her stuff and spray her perfume. Yeah. And that's when I really fell in love with fragrance was playing in her perfume. Played in my grandma's perfume. I played in my mom's, everybody's perfume. Like, that was my thing. So I've been collecting forever. I've been collecting before I even knew that this was a whole thing. <laughs> like, I had no idea, seriously, that there was communities of people who talked about fragrances. I never knew that that even existed. It was just yeah. like, I kind of fell into it just randomly one day, but um, that's not like my trade. So, but professionally, I'm in the nursing field, which I'm trying to transition out of that because, you know, it's a whole different time now. I don't want to be in that field no more. <laughs> I want to okay. do something else. So, um, but yeah, I always had a love for fragrance. I've always had a collection. Um, I think it's like gradually changed. Now, I've always liked unique fragrances. I think my very first, like, really, really, really different fragrance was Angel by Moogler. You know, Ooh. that came out, and that, that came out a long time ago. You know, that was, that was my, not my first one, but it was my first, I, if I had to categorize it, would be okay. like a niche type of fragrance. Because it was different. It hit different back then. People didn't know how to take angel yeah. back then you know, it was different and i found it to be very unique and and strange and odd and i was like okay you know uh i could i i like this so before that you know i was buying donna karen she's one of my favorite perfumers um before i even knew 
what niche was, you know, I used to buy a lot of Donna Karen. I think she kind of is like, I can relate to her since they're not very girly, you know, cause I'm not really into the girly, girly type of sense, except for yours. I think <laughs> that one is <laughs> room 129 is like probably the girliest fragrance I have in my collection, honestly. Wow, wow. But um, that's just my thing. Like, fragrances so when i two years ago i jumped on youtube did a video talking about my favorite fall fragrances and the next day i woke up and it had like 1500 views and i was like what the hell is this <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah. so i started researching and looking at videos and i was like oh there's a whole community of people that make videos and talk about perfumes and yeah. fragrances and I was so green back then you know I just I just liked what I liked yeah. you know it wasn't it was fun it wasn't like it kind of is now it's very kind of saturated a lot of people are yeah. into fragrances you know fragrance is big now you yeah. know it's a thing now and you know so because I feel like it's so big um, I found myself really having to educate myself on fragrances and how they're made and the notes and the chords and all that. You know, as two years ago, I didn't, you asked me what, it, what an accord was. I can tell you that. You know, you know, you know. When you ask me now, and it's different. So, you know, that's that's kind of like my story. I can't, I don't know. I guess I would love to be a full time YouTuber and talk about fragrances all the time because I, I I love fragrances. I love the journey that it sends me on. You know, I don't want a fragrance in my collection that doesn't make me feel something or trigger a memory or something like that. Every last single fragrance in my collection, when I spray it, I can take you back to something. I could take you like on a trip yeah. because that's kind of like how I'm building my collection. You know, I'm a little bit of a storyteller. So <laughs> I my love fragrance stories. You have fragrances, like if I spray something and I, if you watch my video, I have a fragrance that I talk about. It reminds me of Thanksgiving. So I love when my fragrances do that. It, I love to be transported with fragrances. And that's why I like, I like one, Room 129 a lot because it reminds me of my childhood a lot. Wow. Yeah. So you have to tell me about that. I'll talk about myself in a second. So like, tell me about that memory from your childhood that it triggered. So when I smell it, I actually have it right here. When I smell it, and I don't know about if this was like how it was in, in your hood. It was like this in my hood. You know, we had a cool cup lady. We had a lady that would sell candy out of her house. That was, you know, you know, Miss, Miss uh, Thompson. You know what I'm saying? She like five doors down. And she got, you know, she got all the candy. She got the cool cup. She got now later. She got everything. So when I smell this. It's, it's it's it smells like candy. It smells like now laters, you know. It lo it smells like candy, and I'm and I'm sent back to my childhood because I can't tell you the last time I ate a now later. Like <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I ate a now later, but it reminds me of the cherry Kool Aid cups, the cherry Kool Aid, the now laters. It's very it's very sweet, and I would say this is probably one of the sweetest fragrances true to the smell because i have a lot of gourmands that smell like cookies and cakes and vanilla and blah 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 but this one smells authentic like an authentic piece of candy and it's the only fragrance that i have like like that in my collection wow, wow. the only one and it doesn't smell synthetic. You know, it doesn't smell like a fake cherry. You know, it smells like a real live piece of candy. <laughs> wow. 
It yeah. smells like Kool Aid, man. Yeah. You, know, yeah. man, you yeah. know, we used to love. I I know you drank Kool Aid. Of course, man. I haven't had it in over five, over ten years, but I love it. Uh, it <laughs> smells like Kool Aid. Kool Aid. I'm about to go buy some Kool Aid tomorrow, matter of fact. You know, yeah, sugar. and you know, you use the, you take the big thing of sugar, open it up, <laughs> and then you like pour it in there, uh -huh. and then your mama be like, "Boy, that's enough sugar." Uh huh. <laughs> that That's what this reminds me of. Yeah, you take a spoon and you just stir it up. Yes, mm -hmm. that is this in a bottle. I don't know <laughs> if that's what that's the story behind it, but that's what it gives me. I'm gonna share the story behind it. So, Room One Twenty Nine was actually um, it was a fragrance that came to me randomly, mm. and I wanted to make. I wanted to make the person that wore it smell amazing, but in a way that was uh, like fruity. However, not too fruity. Okay. And that, I created the fragrance first. So the interesting thing is I created a fragrance. It didn't have a name. Then I had a dream that night and I had a dream and it was a vision that I had of this hotel door Okay. And it's room 129 on that hotel door. And that door opens really slow. Uh -huh. You walk in. It's a woman sitting on the edge of her bed with a red dress on, looking out the window. Okay. And you can tell that she's waiting for something. So you're like, what is she waiting for? She has this glass of wine in her hand. And she's just sitting there looking out into the window. And all of a sudden, knock, knock, knock door and opens again uh -huh. the room service guy comes in he has a tray he takes the top off of the tray you know like those old trays that had they lift up yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. he took that off and it was a an arrangement of all these different fruits okay and and in the middle of the fruit was a bottle of perfume with a note attached to it Okay. It was a note from her husband inviting her upstairs. And that's how I came up with the vision for the fragrance Room 129. It was an invitation for her from her husband. Wow. That's and you and you dreamed all this? Huh? You dreamed it? You dreamed this? Yeah, it was, it was a vision that came to me. I literally saw this and I even drew it. And it, this this is a very special fragrance. This fragrance was crafted from love. Mm -hmm. Like all of the fragrance I craft, you know, I, I don't even design unless I'm in the right headspace. Like I'm not just a person who takes a whole bunch of notes and uses the technical analysis to like break this down, break that down. Yeah, I'm a, I, I'm a filler. Like you say, you feel that authenticity in the fragrance when I'm creating. I have to make sure that I'm in the, like, whatever I want my love to be translated to that fragrance. So when a person receives the fragrance, they're receiving that, what I sent out to them. Yeah. And, and, and that all of our fragrances are made from love, literally. You know, like, we don't even touch the products because mm -hmm. everything is made one by one. We don't okay. even touch the products unless everybody is in the right space. Wow. That's cool. So there's a lot of intentionality and thought that goes into each perfume bottle. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. I like that. So you guys don't even like if you if somebody's in a bad mood, then they gotta go they yeah. gotta get get some air, come back and then <laughs> yeah. get they some Kool-Aid or something. Yeah, go go meditate, yeah. take a take a five minute break come back and then start back to work mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's okay i like that yeah because it, <laughs> the, the intention not right <laughs> it, it's not there but whoever made my bottle was having a wonderful day that day like <laughs> it, i have all the love in my bottle honey because it <laughs> smells amazing and every time i smell it i love it it's like a mood enhancer you know Mm -hmm. I don't have too many fragrances like that that make me happy. I have fragrances that make me pretty, mm -hmm. sexy, but to invoke happiness yes. is something totally different. Yeah. Yeah. 
a lot of fragrances don't do that. They can make you feel other things, but happiness is, I love when fragrances do that. And this one for sure, for sure does it. Wow. For sure. Wow. Yeah. So how long have you been making fragrances? Huh? How long have you been making fragrances? So uh, professionally, I've been crafting them since 2010. Okay. So 2010, I've been crafting them since then. And I have been blessed to be under the mentorship of a very well-known, um, well, she was more so like a mentor to me. She wasn't a perfumer herself. But mm -hmm. she was connected with perfumers and she was connected with a lot of well-known brands like Ralph Lauren, Hobo, okay. Clive Christian, like really, um, really established and solid brands. Mm -hmm. And she was, she became my mentor and helped me to start to have language and a focus point for what we wanted to design in our company. Okay. So originally when I started, I just wanted to make people feel like luxury. And, and, and we still, like, we still there. Like, we just want every customer to feel yeah. like luxury. Yeah. And if you ask me the definition of luxury, matter of fact, let me pause for a moment. What is the defini definition of luxury to you? The definition of luxury to me. Um, what does it look like? Expensive. <laughs> <laughs> It looks expensive. It looks like, you know, I'll tell you what it is. Like, literally yesterday I was at work, and I was so tired. And I happened to look out the window, and there was a man sitting in his, sitting in his Bentley truck, mm -hmm. just sitting there on his phone, sitting there, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Probably doesn't have a care in the world. You know, probably money is long, can afford whatever. That's luxury to me. You know, something that, and I hate to put a dollar on it. Hey, but, it is what it is. But it's, it's opulence. You know, yes. it's like you see it in... It may not even cost that much, but it looks like a million dollars. You know, like him sitting there look look like luxury to me. Like something I a place where I would like to be. Wow. Like, you know, like something nice, something that I would like to have. Something that I, I feel like I could pass down to my daughter, you know. Yeah. So I guess yeah, luxury is shiny, it's bright, it's brand new money big house something that everybody don't they don't have mm. you know what i'm saying uh -huh. everybody you know everybody can't get a million dollar car yeah yeah that's luxury uh -huh. okay to me like yeah. and i guess we all have our own definition of it you know i, I love that's what i love about it yeah <laughs> I, and that's what I love about, like, I see Cammie, she just said, luxury is comfortably living past what's already brought you peace. Right. That's what she said luxury is. And, and that's the cool thing, like, um, luxury, um, when I first started the company, luxury to me was exactly what you just said, right? Mm -hmm. It was exactly that. And I still, there's an attachment there. I still make that attachment. But when I first started, it was, like you said, it was the Bentley truck, it was the Rolls Royce, it was the Ferrari, it was ultra opulence. Yes. And I wanted to make that atmosphere and that type of feel come out of our packaging and, and uh, out of our company. And everything right. that we did, when we did events, I wanted people to feel like, like you're going to the Great Gatsby type of feel. Like yes. that's how I, we wanted to make our company feel. But there was a transition that happened inside of me as the owner. Okay. And that transition was this. I started to discover that luxury is actually intangible, right? So luxury, according to the definition, the term means something that is unattainable to the masses. Yes. So what I had to say to myself, what's unattainable to the masses? So I walked around and I meditated upon this for at least a week. 
Mm-hmm. And one day I went in the mirror and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm unattainable to the masses. I'm luxury. And I, I said that to myself and I said, this is what I want other people to feel. I yeah. want them to feel like that luxury product, like your presence, You're right. your, your, your gifts, your talents, what you have, that's luxury because there is no one else that has that. Exactly. That can do it the way you do it. Right. And, I and, feel and, you. And that's unattainable to the masses because in order for, like, for example, people on this conversation right now, if you're not here, you're not experiencing this. This is a snapshot in time. But anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, our whole concept and feel that we want to give to our clients is that of them being the opulence. That when you see the opulence, it's only a reminder of what's in you. Right. Yes. And I feel that. I feel that even from even when I first got the bottles, I love the way that they look. They look, you know, the clear glass and they look so good when I put them on my display and the light is shining on them. You know, like I feel because, you know, for me, I'm a very visual person. So yeah. everything starts with my what I see. Mm -hmm. And so that intrigues me to want to know more about the fragrance, you know, so I love the bottles. Well, you know, I I did a whole video on the on your fragrances, so you know, I, yeah, you, you big, made my day with that video. You made my day. You welcome. I'm big on presentation, so the bottles, like I felt it. Even when I got the packaging, everything came so personalized. Like you know, you took whoever packaged it, took the time and wrote my name on it. And stuff like that. And I think people forget the little things. You know, they forget those little touches, you know, as a consumer. Because I'm still consuming. I'm still buying. Even though I, I'm an influencer, people don't send me anything for free hardly ever. You know, my whole collection I built on my own, you know, with my own coin. So it's nice when... You know, people add those little touches. And I read it. I was like, oh, they call me Lady Amanda. You know, I thought that was really dope, you know, because it was an experience. You know, it just wasn't, it gave me the feels. It just wasn't me opening up a package. You know, it was it was the whole experience for me. So I, I do enjoy that. And I love how they come with the little hankies because I'm always doing this. <laughs> I always, you know, I don't want fingerprints on my bottles, you know, any of that. So I, this is a really nice touch. So I, I, I get the luxury in it. And of course, you know, when I spray it on me, it just sends me, you know, somewhere else too. So I love that. I love that a lot. Oh man, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I, it's, it's making me just jump for joy to see the comments and the feedback. Um, I, I'm seeing some amazing comments. You guys are just sharing your story and your definitions of luxury and sophistication. It, it, it's just so cool. Like, I, I'll share another story. Okay. So, I went to this years back when I first started the company because I bootstrap, bootstrap meaning like I had to pick up my boots, strap them up, and go make the money. There was no Here. person that came to me, like, invest in 100000 or investing a thousand like i had to pick my boots strap them up and hustle so yep. one of the things that i did to hustle was i pursued to get like a shark tank type competition thing in new york uh -huh. i went there and i met this gentleman and it was an amazing conversation it was really encouraging and really empowering from that conversation it set up another conversation where he actually did this Transform transformative like session where he okay. asked me questions and mm -hmm. he was asking me questions and it came a point where he was asking me what is luxury to you and we he really we really like you know he had me like breathe I had to like relax and everything and the only thing I was seeing was a, a beach with just like beautiful blue water mm. nice clean sand and just so peaceful and I'm like, 
like this is the journey like remember how i told you how i started off viewing luxury as mostly material stuff yes which is there's nothing wrong with that stuff but that was my mindset starting out but then i as i transition i'm starting to see luxury is in moments those like on the beach with your family or you know with your husband or with your you know with your wife your children those yep. moments are unattainable to the masses because yep. you are experiencing that so exactly. yeah so it's like when i figured out like yo a lot of companies are trying to make people feel better about how can i say this they're trying to sell people a product and a lifestyle rather than trying to sell people to themselves mm -hmm. i'm gonna repeat that again these companies out here are trying to sell a lifestyle rather than trying to sell people to themselves. And what I mean by that is this, most brands, like especially fragrance, and this is what, you know, I'm exposing some things here. When I say exposing, I'm referring to uh, some of our own personal convictions in the town of Farrell. Okay. Most companies try to over-sensualize their ads where it's like the woman is all over the man or the man is all over the woman. Yeah. They may be scantily clad, um, have less clothes on, all this stuff. And while I understand that those are realities and these things happen, I feel like that's all too common where right. these fragrances are trying to get you to like pursue that. You, like you're, you're buying it because you want to be pursued. But right. they're not trying to make you dive deeper inside and learn more about who you are. Like exactly. every time you wear a fragrance, there should be some type of uh, connection with wherever you bought it from. So for example, if you buy a Tom Ford fragrance, nobody knows who, like, I don't know what Tom Ford looks like. Do you know what he looks like? Of course. You do? Oh, yes. you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I do know what he looks like. I take that. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, and I'm over here like, of course I do. Like, I just had lunch with the man yesterday. I mean, but yeah, I know what he looked like, you know. <laughs> but that's me, though. You know, I I dive into, when, I, when I'm when i into something, I dive into it. I, I literally research everything and yeah. everybody. <laughs> that, but that's just me. Yeah, and, and that's good. And, and that's really good. But, like, what I was saying is, like, I just feel like more of these brands, they should be really trying to connect with the customer more authentically as yes. opposed to trying to sell them something that's outside of who, the, who they are already. Right. I agree. And, that, and that's really my point because we have a lot of men and women who do not feel like amazing people. Like they don't feel good about themselves and they feel like in order to feel good about themselves, they have to purchase something. There's always something on the outside of who they are. Yeah. So that's the reason why, like, with our products and our brand, everything that we do is always about authenticity. It's always about you. Yeah. It's, 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 we're not trying to sell anything. We're yeah. trying to sell you. I'm trying to remind right. you that you're luxury. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you this, just because um, I see the movement, and I don't know what happened um, the, with the fragrance movement, but it's, it's big. And I think influencers, because we are consumers, we're exposing a lot of, well, some some of us are exposing a lot of perfumers, <laughs> you know, um, and I'm <laughs> seeing, yes, I'm seeing it a lot, you know, I'll, and I'll tell you this, it's crazy because I had got an affiliation with a uh, perfume company not too long ago right and i'm all happy i'm happy and everything i'm like okay great yeah and then i wake up two two weeks later and there's some bs all floating all on social media about this company and i'm like dang you know I'm like mm -hmm. you know and that's playing on what you said you know could, I think influencers are the ones that are really making the change in that whole thing because guess what? Yeah, back in the day, Tom Ford put out a fragrance and um, he, don't, to be honest with you, I've never seen a Tom Ford commercial Yeah. regarding his fragrances, okay? 
his stuff is just literally word of mouth. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like people spray it, talk about, oh, what you got on? Time for it, time for it. And it just goes on from there. So he really don't have to spend much money on advertisement. Truth be told, you know, people know him from his fashion. Yeah. And, you know, oh, you got a cologne out now. Oh, you doing beauty. And that's it. I've never seen a, a commercial about time for a beauty, makeup. Mm -hmm. Never seen any of that. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like now I think consumers are wanting more. Like they're wanting to know more about the perfumers and the, the inspiration behind it and stuff like that. And I think over since COVID, I think the only perfumer, it's been a lot of them, but the only one that I see, maybe because I follow him, that really, really got on and was talking about his fragrances was Killian. And I mean, yeah. on, a, on a big scale like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about as big as he is. I think he's like the only one that I saw sitting on his couch on a Zoom or sitting in a chair kind of chill talking about his, you know, his fragrances or whatever. But a lot of them I haven't. But influencers are definitely changing. They they mm -hmm. switching it up on y'all. Like, they Yo. really, Yo. they really, like, bringing it to the forefront, you know, especially with Black Girls Smell Good. You know, that's a whole movement now. You know, so... They they definitely want to see more authentic <laughs> perfumers yeah. out here. Yeah. Like they not they not playing because you know <laughs> when they start no. putting it out there and a lot of them don't care. You know that could take a real big hit on your pocketbook. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like so, a lot of people have to be careful with that. But yeah, yeah I totally get what what you're saying as far as a fragrance making you feel something. I think a lot of people sometimes too buy fragrances because they're popular. Everybody's wearing it. And once you really like become a fragrance lover, not just a collector, but a lover, mm -hmm. it makes you want to learn more. You know, it makes you want to learn about the perfumer and all yeah. Not just buying it because you know, everybody's wearing it. You know, it makes you want to actually educate yourself. Yes. yes. Yeah. On the on the fragrance. So that's what that's where I'm at in my journey right now. Yeah, you have pretty pretty uh a pretty good collection. And I love your presentation too. I saw your shelves and this you know Yeah, yeah, you know, I try to do a little something, something, you know. A little something, something, but people don't realize that every last fragrance in here, and it's so at this point because I have changed the way I buy fragrances and what I purchase. I'm it's hard for me to purge my fragrances because I'm attached to every last yeah. single one. <laughs> you know, it's hard for me to get rid of them because I'm thinking like, oh, I need to make some space. I need to do this. But yeah. then I'm like, oh, I don't want to get rid of this. I don't want to get rid of that. Like, you know, it's it, it's getting very difficult. It's yeah. getting very difficult. And, you know, and it's getting a little, um, I'm kind of, my nose is changing. Let's just say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're evolving. I'm evolving. I'm evolving in my my fragrance journey. Mm -hmm. I'm evolving a lot. Like I can I can talk about notes. <laughs> uh oh. And I never thought I would be like doing that, you know. But you know, people ask me questions, so I feel like I need to educate myself. I don't ever want to tell anybody the wrong thing, you know. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of that, so what is one of your favorite fragrance notes? And I'll tell you mine in a second. My favorite fragrance note. Are we speaking of floral? Are we speaking of no, wood? Just like, 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 just um, your favorite fragrance, like note, or it could be a family of fragrances. Okay, let me start with the florals then. Okay. So I just recently realized I like iris. I like iris a lot. Yeah. I'm not That's a nice big place. rose girl. Like, um. Yeah. It depends on the rose. I don't like the fresh, bright, pinky, rosy smells. It has to be a little mature, a little older type of rose. And it has to be blended with 
um, maybe some oud mm -hmm. or some incense, a little bit of vanilla because, you know, we're talking about a rose. So a rose yeah. has to be a little pretty. You know what I'm saying? Because she's she has to smell pretty because rose roses are beautiful, you know, so, you know, she got to smell pretty. Yes. So maybe a little bit of vanilla, you know, something like that. But the iris is interesting thing about the iris. It smells the same to me in every last single fragrance. Like I smell it and I'm like, that's iris because it has a very powdery dry down. Yes. But when a perfumer can make it undetectable for me, uh, I'm pretty much buying the fragrance. <laughs> like I'm buying it because I, you know, because I can pick it out so well, you know, and I just, I love the fragrance of it. It's, um, it's not anything spectacular like a rose, you know, or gardenia or jasmine, you know, um, it's just very unique. And when a perfumer can, can put a different spin on it, I really like that. Okay, somebody asked me a question. Uh, sure, let's go. Let's okay, so it said, Mr. Talia Farrow, did you enjoy my presentation and post of your BED fragrance? That's from, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I think I did see that. Mr. Did you Mr. see it? Udit. Mr. Udit. Is that his name? I think that's how I pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. That's him. Yes. I, I, I loved it. Very sincere. Um, just very well said. Very well said. Thank you, Nairon. I appreciate you, man. He's actually from Trinidad as well. He, okay. So one thing is, I haven't even been to Trinidad yet. So I told him that if I do come out there, we have to connect. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because he's going he gonna to take you to all the hot spots. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you know it's different when you go to uh, Trinidad. You stay at a hotel and the concierge, you know, uh -huh. set you up on the excursions. But when you have somebody that really lives there, yeah. um, man, they're going to take you to the best restaurants. They're going to take you. It's really going to be an experience of your life. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's uh -huh. going to be way different. Way different. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be nice. That's going to be nice. So, um, what is your favorite fragrance from your line? Don't oh, you, does that does that oh, annoy oh. you when people ask you that? Yeah, and I don't. It doesn't annoy me. It humbles me um, because I know they are your babies, and that's kind of like hard for you just have babies. to pick one. They're like my little children. I'm so like protective of them. Uh, <laughs> so you know what? I'll say this: the fragrance I have been wearing a lot lately is actually Seasons from the Scented Social line. And I'll tell you what that is in a moment. Okay. But I've been wearing that fragrance a lot lately. And it's a very, like, it has a gourmand element to it. But it's uh -huh. like a nice, clean, powdery dry down. And I, I, I just love that fragrance. It was created for an event, which I'll tell you about now. So there's okay. an event that I do at least once a year it's known as the scented social okay and we usually do a theme for it so the last one was titled the, the, the scented social black excellence edition okay and for this one we actually had a small segment in there where we honor the legacy of cicely tyson mm -hmm. and if you go to my page go to my instagram you'll see me doing some little dance thing or whatever but um, I was actually spraying perfume. If you look at that closely, I was spraying perfume in the air and I was doing it to the beat of a song that I felt spoke to Cicely Tyson, like her power, yet her humble, her, her humility. Okay. And um, that's, that's on the page. But in that event, there's a portion where we call it the mystery naming session. Now, I don't want nobody taking my ideas. But I'll tell you, you know, the people on this line, so pay attention. I might have to whisper this. It's like, nah. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. So we nah, they, it's exclusive. They heard it here first, so it's they can't exclusive. copy. It's exclusive. At the event, there's a mystery naming session where the fragrance that I bring to the event does not have a name. Okay. So during the naming session, 
at the end of the event, everybody has a chance to smell the fragrance for the first time, which is unreleased to the public. They mm -hmm. get to smell it and they actually give their interpretation and a name for the fragrance. Okay. And once everyone has spoken in the room, at the end, we actually start to call the names out and we literally do a vote based on a, a class on which fragrance, become what the name of the fragrance becomes. Wow, okay. So the last event that we had, which was in September on the 18th, okay. was, the fragrance was named Seasons. And if you go to the website, you'll see the description. A woman gave a wonderful description and story, but we were just <laughs> all like, we were just we just all melted when she shared when she shared the whole inspiration behind the name that she chose, which was seasons. What are the notes? Uh, oh, I should the say what song. what are the accords? So what I like to do, let me go to it now, because it's such a very interesting fragrance. I'm gonna just give it to you now. So in, in seasons we have three main elements, which are frangipani, chocolate, and amber. Oh my God. Frangipani, I like that. It's it's kind of tropical. Is it kind of sweet, tropical uh, kind of smell to it? Okay. A and what was like, like a little hit of chocolate. Okay. Amber, but it's not okay. overpowering chocolate. It's like, ooh. What was that? Yeah. Wow. That I like that. Okay. I may have to live I may have to use that. So you know what? Hold up. Use my we're gonna, code. We're gonna do a giveaway. Oh, we're we are? Do, we're gonna do a giveaway today. So pay attention. So, okay. Yeah, I, that just came Listen over. Listen up, like, y'all. Yeah, we're gonna do a giveaway of a few fragrances today. So, so Pam uh, Pam asked a question about Sicily. She's thinking about buying it, and she wants to know, um, share what touched you to commemorate a fragrance in her honor, which you kind of did a little bit already, but she just put that, dropped that question in my little... She, oh, she wants to know what inspired me to commemorate her legacy? Yes, with that, with your fragrance. Sure. So, you know what? I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to do you guys even better. I'm going to do something even better. I'm going to read something to you that I wrote in honor of Cicely Tyson. And, I, and then I'll tell you what it is. So there was a... Okay, slow down, Hakeem. I'm getting excited. Okay. <laughs> Last year, January 29th, this is when she transcended this earth. She left this place. And I was honored with the opportunity to carry her tomb. I mean, not her tomb, but to carry her coffin. Really? At her, yeah, at her actual, yeah, yeah. I was one of the pallbearers. And wow. And there's a special service that we do. It's called white glove service, where instead of just carrying a bod, carrying the, the, her vessel, just like on our arms, uh -huh. we put her on our shoulders, and we march as if we are in the army. Wow. So... I was one of the pallbearers assigned to Cicely Tyson's funeral. And I can remember it was so much conversation that was going on in the room while we were waiting to go out there to pick her up from mm -hmm. the front of the church. And mind you, like this was a this church was very nice, but the aisles were so narrow. Okay. So literally when we were this is a whole story in itself. When we were marching her out, the, because the aisles were so narrow, I had to like try not to bump into people like Tyler Perry and Bill Clinton who were there wow. at her wedding. I mean, at, not at her wedding, at her funeral. Her at the, yeah. Wedding. So we're marching and I'm like, oh my God, like this is Cicely Tyson that I'm being able to honor her legacy by doing this. So we finally get outside and I'm just like, wow. I'm just thinking about what she went through. And as we lifted her into the air, it made me think of the people that she lifted up in the air mm -hmm. through her 
service through her dedication. And I'm gonna just read something really quick. This is actually what we, what I know, what I title, these are well composed thoughts because we are coming out with a um, small poetry book sometime soon. Okay. But this, the name of this poem is, is titled, um, I've Done My Best. Should I read it? You want me to read it or you want me to? Well, yeah, you didn't promise this far. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is, I've done my best. This is dedicated to Cicely Tyson. So okay. mind you, this is what I wrote after I got home. I'm sitting on my bed and I'm thinking about what just happened that day. Okay. So I said, I've held on tight. I've also let go. I've done my best. I've also not done anything at all. I've carried burdens. I've also been one. I ponder upon these sorts of things as I sit on the edge of my bed. Blue light provides light for me as I find a place for my thoughts to rest. No one knows that today I was given the opportunity to carry a burden, one that carried burdens for others. As the other five men and I hoist her vessel into the air, I feel the weight, I feel the weight, I feel the weight, I feel the weight the weight of one who was qualified to carry the weight of her people into her roles. She was dignified, dainty, yet solid. My heart aligns with her soul's mission to make my life count for something and to stand for that which others reject, ignore, suppress, belittle, in the hope that my pain may pave the way for the next generation. I don't know much personally about Cicely Tyson, but there is this subtle unspoken witness one receives when they experience another soul's call to greatness. The heart of a forerunner knows well. Hmm. The banging of the pipes from the basement feeding my radiator seek to distract me at the moment, at the time of this writing. But oddly, I am inspired by the noise this time because my soul seeks to do the same thing to the earth. I want my, when I die, I want my death to make a sound and to leave an impression. I want my pain to distract others from theirs. I want their burdens to be elevated. I want their souls to find rest. To this high calling, I respond yes. And may my last words be, I've done my best. That was beautiful. You know how you know that's what they do in the poetry lounge. <laughs> yes. We yes, got we got true. a few poetry lounges in Houston. You know, we be Yes. <laughs> now that was beautiful. Thank you. You Thank sat you. down and wrote that right after the funeral? Yeah, this is what when I when I arrived in my house, I'm literally sitting on the edge of my bed and I'm just like, my son is gonna um hear this story mm -hmm. and like she's a legend she's uh oh, definitely so like the fact that i was even in the same room and able to carry her it's just that's it's me i love that you know because i feel like that's something that you'll cherish forever yes until you until your last day you know what i'm saying that's something that you carry in your heart you know that's luxury too you know that's that's a blessing that 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 you know God gave you. That was a a piece of luxury because who, who who has the honor of being a pallbearer for Miss Cicely Tyson? Yes, right. Yes. That is an honor. That's that's even more of an honor of probably meeting her in person because you just can't touch everybody casket now. Yes. You know, when they pick pallbearers, they pick those that really close to the person that's passed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's a brother. It's a best friend. It's a mm. father. It's a, you know what I'm saying? Pallbearers are just not random folks off the street. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. So for that, for someone to honor you with that is a lot. That's a, that's a, that's a piece of luxury. 
it, that it, is it, it, it is. That's it, it something is. that nobody else can say except for the other brothers that was with you during that time. But no, none of us can say that. And in that video, if you want to see it, it's actually on the page as well. You'll find it somewhere down there. In the yeah. I actually saw the whole process of um, your the naming of the fragrance. Were you guys holding candles or something? We were holding a flower. You're holding a flower, yes. And it was kind of dark in the room? Yeah. Yes. I tell you, when I research people, I research people. I go hey, way I best. I, I go, because, you know, I like to know who I'm dealing with. You know, a lot of times I feel like, especially as an influencer, um, I feel like companies have a tendency to to use you for your platform. Yes. And, you know, with the way the world is today, you got to kind of be careful who you associate yourself with because that's something that will stick with you forever. Yes. It may not be talked about forever, but it's going to be with you forever. You know yes. what I'm saying? So whenever I like to, you know, talk to people, do lies and stuff like that, you know, with you being my very first perfumer, you know, I say, well, let me do a little research first. <laughs> Mostly because I didn't want to come over here looking crazy. Like I don't, it's like a job interview. Yeah. You know, you got to research the company. You got to do your due diligence and, and read. So I did go back and I saw the ceremony. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, that, that you do that. So I don't think too many people, uh, do that have that process of naming their fragrances but but who knows I guess I'll be learning as the years to come how people name their fragrances you know yeah. it's always a story behind it I'm pretty sure if I come out with my own fragrance there's going to be a story behind that as well absolutely <laughs> absolutely it's definitely going to be a story behind it so you would say Sicily is your favorite? Because you, I don't think you answered the question. Did you? Oh, you oh, said yeah. Seasons. So, Did you so say I, Seasons? I, you're right. I didn't. So I said that Seasons is my current favorite. But okay. as far as like my favorite notes, I love Agarwood. I, I love Oods. Okay. I love Oods. Oh, man. Um. Oods are amazing. Yes. It, it's an acquired um, taste like wine yes. and cheese, expensive cheese, not that old <laughs> sliced yeah. cheddar stuff. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We talking about yeah. some aged cheese. Yes. You know, it's an acquired taste. It's not for everybody. Yes. But, uh, but I do enjoy it too. So, so I'll, I'll say this because I saw, um, I think that is Courtney talked about bed. Um, Bed actually is, is, is like if I was to go to my collection, and like if you, if I had to choose one, like this, you, know, you can't take any other fragrance with you, it would probably be room 129 in bed, those two. I like the final yeah. one. Like, if it was one I could take, I had to combine them somehow because I love both of them. Yeah. I love both of those fragrances. Bed was my first fragrance ever. Yeah. And when I created that fragrance, the vision I had in mind was a young man laying down on the bed, and he is currently unemployed, because that was me at that time. <laughs> laying down, looking up at the ceiling, just thinking like, wow. Just imagining himself in a business office with investors, mm. and he is like, I'm going to make sure that I pitch this thing perfectly. I'm going to make sure that I'm dressed to the T. I'm going to make sure that I smell amazing. So when I designed bed, I had in mind kind of like that corporate office, like that boss running a meeting, but yeah. also kind of like sitting down at the table mm -hmm. and just like a coach at the same time. Like he's so, so powerful, yet so humble. Yeah. And that's what the fragrance bed is. It stands for become everyone's desire. Because it's it's really a fragrance for everybody. It's for a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's for that person who has that quiet confidence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The you know the one thing I like about this fragrance though? 
it's very versatile. Like you can, like I could spray this on like easy. It's like, you don't have to think about it. You know, like one of them fragrances, like it's just an easy grab. You know, it's going to smell good regardless, whatever you have on, you know. And I let my daughter smell it. And she said that it reminded her of walking through a um, expensive, like a big hotel. She said that, you know, how you walk through a hotel and they have these candles or something. And I said, you're right. Is we In Houston, we have Hotel Derrick. I don't know if you've heard of it. I don't even know if it's just in Houston or if they have other hotels. But um, it's an extremely, uh, well, back when they first opened, it was a very extremely exclusive, expensive hotel. Wow. And when she said that, I was like, you're right, because I remember going there for a holiday party. Mm. And when I walked through, the ambiance in, in the lobby was kind of uh, dim. And yes. they had these huge candles sitting on the floor. And they were burning the candles. And they had this beautiful aroma mm. in the hotel. And that, wow. that's what, when I smelled this, it instantly reminded me of like that, like a, a luxurious hotel. Yes, yes. Yeah, this would be a beautiful home scent. You should make this into like room spray. And I would just spray this all over. My, I'm that person, like I love to spray everything. <laughs> you know, like, say that. yeah, put it in a little, uh, make a little, I don't know, maybe like a 10 ml, maybe something bigger, 15 little house spray when you spray it and then it kind of missed out like a cloud okay you know? yeah like this would smell really great as a home fragrance and a candle mm. i like i like that idea actually yeah like is it does it have We're any citrus in it yes it does that's see that's what it has a, a like faint lemony kind of mm -hmm. citrusy smell and I like my candles to smell like that in the house. So this would, I think this would, look, I'm giving you ideas. <laughs> hey, that's, this would hey, be a good so home hard. fragrance. I'm telling you. Wow. Yeah, it's fresh, it's bright, you know. Um, I just could see myself spraying it all the time in the house. Yeah, we're working on something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, but you know, I'll show you guys something really quick, actually. Hold on. Hey, you guys. Let me see. Who was that? <sighs> so. Thank you, Tammy. This, this guy right here. We're experimenting. Yes. And we kind of want to do something with, like, house fragrance. Um, what so, are those called? Huh? What are those called? Because this those is called are called a room diffuser. Diffuser. What are the little sticks called? They have a name. Uh, diffuser reads. Yes. Those are very popular. They're making a comeback. Yeah. They're, they're making a comeback because, uh, and me and Pam was talking about that on our live last week, how um, <laughs> it wasn't healthy to burn candles. There you go. Because of the... Um, the soot that it puts out. And so a lot of people are using diffusers now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like where we're headed right now. Uh, so you guys got like a little sneak peek of something that we're working on. Because like what you said, it's funny because if you ask me how this company started, the original vision I had was to create plugins that were the same fragrance as your perfume. Okay. The same fragrance as your car fragrance, and the same yeah. fragrance as your office fragrance, and the whole idea was to make your fragrance experience memorable. So that let's say, for example, you let's say it's me, for example, and mm -hmm. I'm like, my wife, right? So that fragrance, every time she smells it, she smells it on me. She also smells it when she comes in the house. She smells it when she gets in the car. So everywhere, I'm everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and, and that's what I wanted to originally, like that was the plan that I had for the company was to create that experience. Yeah. Where, like 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 literally 
that fragrance is everywhere. So if you think about it like this, like imagine having by Killian, which uh, uh, what is it? what's that? It's that fragrance I love. By it's a by Killian fragrance. Um, which one? Black Phantom. Black Phantom. That yeah, black that, Killian, I like Phantom. that. Just imagine having that fragrance as a plug-in, having it as a you know perfume, mm -hmm. then having it as a car spray, like all those different versions. It would just make your fragrance experience so like this consistent. Yeah. Now yeah, is so, the time to do it. Now is the time to do it because guess what? Everybody's working from home. Yeah. Oh, Everybody's so sorry working to hear from that, home. Tara. I, I know. Like, yeah. Oh man. My Everybody goodness. loves the idea of the diffusers. So sounds like a winner. The people yeah. have spoken. They want the diffusers. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, hold up. Okay. So so how do you want to do this giveaway? I know what I'm going to give away. I'll let you think about how you want to do this. Whether it be question, you know, or something. I don't know. You could question and answer type thing. So it's uh, when I ask the question, whoever answers first wins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I need everybody that's been here from the beginning of the live to put in a one. If you've been here from the beginning of the live, put a number one in the in the comments because you're going to be able to answer this question. Somebody said, I've heard great things about Room 129. Should I try it? Absolutely. If you like sweet gourmand fragrances, you should try it. Oh, I'm getting a lot of ones. Uh-oh. I'm getting a lot of ones. Wow. So just for those who, just so I'll share my collection with you guys, I have BED. I have 129, my fave, room 129. I have the wood. I decanted some of this for my dad. And I gave him some, so I need to follow up with him and see how he likes it. Yeah, because my dad that's another person i think this whole perfume thing was meant to be because my dad had an amazing collection growing up so a part of me i do have some men fragrances as well and that's his fault he had a very <laughs> nice collection and then i have cloud nine i just got cloud nine like a week ago it's been a week it'll be a week tomorrow and, but my favorite one is room 129. I think the wood is number two and then um, cloud nine. Yes, opinionated sense. The wood is so sexy. <laughs> it is so sexy. It just, oh my God, it's just something about that smell. When I first smelled it, like I can, I could visualize the dude in my head when I smelled it. Like, I don't even know the man. Like, I've never met the man, but I I can imagine smelling this, what he would look like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for everybody that put in a one, he's about to do a giveaway. I don't even know what he's giving away. This is new. This is live. Okay, so he was giving down the breakdown of his name. And he talked about his last name, Talia Faro, and he mentioned a region, a country that that name came from who knows the answer of the of the country it's a country right yep it's a country okay if you can name the country of the origin of his last name then you're the winner no cheaters <laughs> and, and you can't go back and watch nigeria <laughs> <laughs> i love it I love it. Sure about Nigeria. I love Nigeria, but that's not it. Though. No, Pam, no, it's not Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody saying Nigeria. Now, do. Now, y'all, really? Come on, now. Look at the name. Maybe you I need to go most, to Nigeria. Maybe that's a sign. Most Nigerian <laughs> last names have these letters that come together, and you can barely even. Nope, not Jamaica, not Trinidad. 
<laughs> should I should I give him a hint? Yes, give him a hint. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, Courtney won. Oh, Courtney. Cor Ooh, okay, Courtney. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna let you know what the prize is. Let me just make sure. I uh, love you, Courtney. Courtney, I need to know why you haven't started a channel yet. Because your fragrance collection is out of this world, girl. Yeah, you got to let us know. Why yes, it, it was school? Italy. It was Italy. Yeah, so um, I think Tara just said is the Telefile, the middle name is someone famous as well. And she's actually correct. Uh, it's actually Booker T. Washington. A lot of people don't know that the T in his name stands for Telefile. Really? Yep. I did not know that. Congratulations, Courtney. So what you yeah. just won is a bottle of Seasons. Oh, yay. So we're going to get you a bottle of Seasons. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll be in touch with you to, you know, get everything set up. Let me just put this here make sure I get you guys down. Okay. Okay, so you have another question for them? Do I have another question for you? Yes. I do. I just want to kind of get your take on it and how and your feel for it. So so what is, what are your thoughts on retail? Like if you were proposition from Saks or Neiman Marcus and they wanted to put your fragrances in stores and your home goods cuz I I see the vision of that coming. You already have the diffuser, so it's already happening. So it's already a done deal. So what are your thoughts on that versus being just, um, is it e-commerce, right? E-commerce, yeah, yeah, you can use, or niche, yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah, so, so how, what are your thoughts on that? How would you feel about that? So we would like to have an aspect of our brand that will be in Saks Fifth. Okay. We don't, we don't know if we want all of our products to be in it because we would like to create some exclusivity and also, like, we want our brand to be a brand that is um, something that you have to find out about. It's special. Yeah. So we do like kind of like that niche, like kind of word of mouth. Yeah. We, you know, we're really fans of that because we just want people who really love our products. Yeah. We're not, we're not interested in competing against the other brands out there. We really just want to create great products and make people feel good. Yeah. And, you know, in a, along the way, you know, of course, there's financial compensation. But ultimately, you know, my, my the goal really is to have our name just stand apart from the rest. Mm hmm Yeah. I think, I think now, nowadays, you really, you kind of really don't have to be in sex. <laughs> to you yeah. to you get there you know what i'm saying like to be in everyone's like a household name you really kind of don't have to need to be in sex because you know that's kind of that's like what happened with makeup i don't know if you follow that trend but uh -huh. people would you know go to department stores and buy it and then they would then all of a sudden these e-commerce makeup people started happening and it took a lot of uh business away from you know a lot of department stores and stuff like that which i can see the trend happening in fragrances as well yeah you know because a lot of fragrances that people want they're not necessarily in stores yeah. So you have to go online and buy it, and it's real. It has a very exclusive feel to it. Yes. So yes. a lot of people probably be like, oh, and plus, you know, I everybody want to cut. <laughs> you. That too. Everybody gonna want to cut. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? So, but I just wanted to know your take on it. Like, if you ever envision yourself being in a department store like that. Yeah. Your so friend. Yeah, there's an aspect of our brand that we would like to be in the department stores, and we've been very strategic about how we, how that will happen. Mm -hmm. and, um, what's up, Denzel? Um, you know, we've been very strategic about that, and honestly, we just we we want to be in specific places. We want to be in places where people go to feel amazing and great. 
you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's just certain places that may not be widely broadcasted, but a lot of people talk about that place. Yeah. Uh, opinionated since said that um, a lot of stores are closing too. Yep, Macy's. Oh my God, they out. They about to be out Crazy. the door. They Crazy. about to be out the door. I think. I think brands are gonna have to get more creative. Yeah. With the climate of the world and everything, like you got to get creative with your with your marketing and stuff like that. Yep. Because yeah, Macy's, they're not. I think they only closed in one here and was in Baytown, which is like thirty minutes away from here. But um, yeah, they, a lot of them are going bye bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, not. And I, I don't wish that on any business. But mm -hmm. like, I feel like the brands, and, and I'm just gonna speak this, and this is something I believe to be, be true. The brands that are authentic and are not so focused on just making money but really want to create genuine connections with customers and create great products they're going to be the brands that really uh, just take off oh definitely definitely because, yeah because I've, pe people like you just said it earlier as far as influences they're exposing things like people appear to be one way like you meet yeah. them in person they're a totally different version you know, and like, it's like that with a lot of companies where they have this persona and everything seems to be a certain way. But then when you meet the founders or you meet the people who are in management, you're like, this is what this company stands for. This, these are your values. And it makes you feel different about the product that they create. Yes, because people don't want to spend their money with people like that. You know? Yeah. They don't want to spend their money. And trust me, I've heard things in the makeup world and I just, I stopped buying the brand because I was just like, I don't want to be associated with that, you know? Yeah. But that's that's just the way that things are going now. So, I mean, I'm all for it, you know? I always, when I, when I, when I first started my YouTube, I always wanted, felt like I had an obligation to be, um, truthful with people about fragrances yes you know um because they're they came to watch my video because they are trying to make a decision on a fragrance to buy and yeah. um saying that the fragrance is something that it's not and then they get it and they're very disappointed and they've spent their mm -hmm. money in xyz so you know my goal is to always be authentic with you know, people that come to watch my videos or watch my lives and stuff like that. So I love the fact that you're on here talking about your fragrances because, you know, people buy them, they smell them, they love them, but, you know, they don't know the person behind them. So now they're building a connection with you and they're going to more than likely buy your fragrances forever because they, you know, they, they're now getting to know you and what you stand for. You know, so they, you know, they're going to be riders. They're going to ride with you. Oh, man, the love they is gonna, real. They, you put them diffusers out, they're going to buy them up because a lot of people in the comments are saying that they don't like to burn candles. So y'all need y'all need to get on that. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. So I, I am so happy that you did this with me. Um, I'm like just over the moon happy. I cannot even imagine this. Like, you know, I don't even really, even the fragrances that I've spent tons of money on, I don't know them people. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like I know you and like, I just thank you so much for coming on here and just, it, you know, telling the world about yourself and. Oh man, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And, you know yeah. What? I want to do one last, I'm feeling generous right now. Oh, and, and, okay. And, and, Santa um, Claus, Santa Claus, see? Yeah. So I, this is your choice. I'm going to, you, you can ask your, you know, the people, you know, the attendees, whatever. And what okay. I'm going to give away is our original collection. It's going to be three fragrances in one. What you receive, it's going to be that same thing. It's going to be bed. It's going to be room 129. And it's going to be the wood. So, so they're gonna get all three of these fragrances. All three of these fragrances, one shot. Wow! So this, is, this is this is a question that you can ask them. It could be about 
your audience something that they should know about you. For example, about me? Yes, yes. Dang, this is now a gift I really gotta think. Some, so I know one thing, there was a fragrance that you mentioned near the beginning of our interview. One of yours? No, about something that you wore recently. And I think you said you wore it, um, I don't think, it's, it's, it's skipping my mind, but it was a fragrance that you wore. And it's a Terry Mugler fragrance. Oh, yes. Okay, so what what is my, the first Terry Mugler fragrance? If you've been on the live since day one, you guys know, I mentioned a Terry Mugler fragrance that I bought years ago that i fell in love with oh Ooh. somebody already said it hey they, they, sweet so, sensation uh, 67 underscore sensations they yo they responded fast i love it i love it i love it yeah you got oh uh, you gonna love it uh sweet sensations do you own any of the talifario fragrances she Oh, you do? Okay. Which one do you own? <laughs> they say, uh, oh, she, oh, so she doesn't have any of your fragrances. Oh, man. So oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Girl, when you get, uh, when you get room 129, message me and tell me what you think about it. Got it. It's my favorite. Got it. Okay, so, so you you're gonna down. um you're gonna DM her? Yes. Okay, and you're gonna DM Courtney? Yeah, and I'm gonna DM Courtney and we'll get that taken care of. That was really nice of you. Thank you for doing that. No problem. That was really nice. She gonna she gonna enjoy the fragrance. Look, when you come out with the diffuser for one uh, room one twenty nine, <laughs> I'm buying like five. I'm gonna have one in every room. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm 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 putting one in every room. When people come in the house, they're gonna be like, damn, it smells good in here. I'm buying one for every last single room. Opinionated since at 129 is in my top 10 for life. Me too, girl. 120 room 129 is in my top 10 for life. Tara is such a like, man. I appreciate you so much. You've been really encouraging in this journey. And I'm just so, I'm happy that you are enjoying our product, but you have no idea how much your videos and just what you've been saying, how it's been encouraging me as a black perfumer um, and as a designer. So, you know, and, and amongst so many other people as well, but like, you know, her videos are, are just so awesome. And like, you know, like yours, like you guys are just so real and just so amazing. And you have no idea what you're doing by just supporting the brand. It's not just the perfume for me. This is my life. Yeah, you know, just, definitely. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's the craziest thing is, um, when I was doing my last video, my, some of my last videos for the end of the year. And I was, um, cause I'm a designer girl. Like a lot of my fragrances are designer. I just started getting into niche yeah. and I would have to say that I wasn't all that, um, like wild. I wasn't really wild with the niche niche fragrances that I was smelling. To be honest with you, I was like, okay, people talk about niche, 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 niche. And I was just like, I was feeling a little disappointed. And mm -hmm. then, you know, when I reached out to you, because I was, I was talking to Pam and I said, it's just by kind of me wanting to buy, like I was online. I wasn't, uh, was it New Year's? No, yep, was it Black it, Friday? It was, it, was, it was Black Friday. Oh, you got to share was, a story. Gotta it share. was Black Friday. And I was, sit, yeah. I was laying in bed and I was like, you know what? I need to try some of my Black-owned brands. So yeah. I'm looking and, and a lot of people was telling me that I needed to try your fragrances. So I was like, bet. So I got on, I went online and you ain't had none of them on sale. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I, I sent him, a, I DM'd him and I was like, what's up with the sales? <laughs> what's up with the sales? <laughs> and he was like, should I have one? And I'm like, uh, yeah, because I got my credit card right here. I'm ready to buy. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yes. You know, and so he was so nice and sent me his fragrances. and But I did buy um, Cloud9. But yeah, that's how I ended up because people was telling Talia Farrell, Talia Farrell, Talia Farrell. I was like, okay, you need to try this Cloud9. You need to try Room 129. And I was like, okay, great. This is my chance to get it, you know, because everybody's having sales. So that's how I actually ended up, how we ended up here in this yep. moment because yep. I was being cheap and wanted to catch a sale. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we ended up here. Yeah. That is our story because I was I literally was intentional with it. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at all the black brands and say, let me go back and see, you know, who people have been talking about. And there was a lot of buzz around you. So I was like, okay, let me go ahead and do it. So yeah. I am I love everything. I love everything. I love your brand. I love it's just you do you're doing your thing you're doing your thing and it's just so much black talent and when it comes to fragrances and i love to see it i love to see my people win and yeah you you doing your thing with the fragrances for real thank thank you thank you thank you mm -hmm. the love is real uh, <laughs> i wish you a lot of success in 2022 i can't wait to see your you don't have candles right you're not doing the candles. You're, do, you're going to go with the diffusers. Uh, most likely, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I can't wait to see what, what new fragrances you're going to come out with the diffusers and all that. I know you got things cooking up, so and I can't wait to see it. Thank, no problem. And, and, and make sure you let them know about Amanda Tang. Yes, you guys. So even though, you know, you guys didn't a lot of y'all didn't win y'all still winning tonight because he's he gave me a discount code for y'all to use it's good for 24 hours yes it's good till monday, monday it's morning. good till monday monday morning okay it's amanda 10 i feel like i put it in my i put it in the description of this live but when i say the live i'm gonna put um i'm gonna put it there as well but it's Amanda 10. You save 10% off on your fragrances. And you guys, a lot of the fragrances are still on sale right now, right? Mm -hmm. So you get, you they get that in addition? Yep. They get it. Okay, so you get, you're get you getting a sale. In addition to that, you're getting a, another 10% off. You can't beat that. Yes, we ship to Canada. Oh, good. So you ship, like, worldwide? Worldwide, correct. Okay. That's good to know love that so thank you again it, it was there anything you wanted to say before we end the live oh you still we still got to do a little freeze frame because i said that i oh, wanted yeah. to let's do it let's you know you can do you can be gq or whatever and i'm i'm just gonna hold up my favorite fragrance okay okay and we only have to hit the pose for like two seconds or three seconds okay all right here we go <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right, I got it. Hopefully, it, hopefully it it took you know when I get ready to upload the video, yes. you know because I said I was going through Pam and I video and it it gives you the option to do a cover, and I was like, we got our mouths open and we looking crazy, and so I said, well when I when I do this with you, I'll make sure that we do a cute little thumbnail so I can use that as the cover. Yes. Did did you get uh did you see everyone's questions? Um I saw a question that was said something about Canada. Was there another question? Oh, hold on. Um Pam wants to know are Kings series permanent? The Kingdom series is permanent, correct. Okay. All right, cool. Did anybody have any questions before I, I let Sir Talifario go? What you, what's your fragrance of the day? What you wearing today? You want to know, I'm actually wearing one of my favorite fragrances outside of the Telefera, which is, you want, you want to take a guess? It starts with a B, ends with a Y. That's the name of the company. 
and the name of the fragrance starts with a T. Who can figure that out? Let's see. Bond, New York? No, no, it starts with a T. Wait, is it a Bond fragrance, though? Not Bond. It starts with a B, ends with a Y. That's the name. There we go. Burberry. Wow. Yo, she, she be on it. Touch. Touch. Very touch. touch. Okay. Right okay. Yeah, that's my free. That's the. That's one of my favorite fragrances. Well, I don't like the Burberry Touch for her. Yeah, Burberry Touch for men. Oh yeah, it, I know it's off the chain. Levels. Okay. <laughs> no Burberry Touch. <laughs> she said no. Thanks. <laughs> that just that goes to show, you know, when it when you love fragrances, it could be something like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, you can it's affordable or it could be something expensive. You never know, you know. Yeah. All all, you know, affordable fragrances don't smell bad. A lot of them are really bomb. You know, it's just yeah. all depends on what you like, what your preference is. Yeah, and, and for me, Burberry Touch, and I, you know, I don't know about the leaf here. Burberry Touch is more so for me just a nostalgic fragrance. It was like one of my uh, first what I call adult purchases. Uh huh. It was a bottle of perfume I bought for myself. Like the first bottle I think I bought for myself. Because before that, the bottles were either gifts or um, uh, like I, I just, you know, inherited it somehow. Like somebody yeah. gave it to me. But Burberry Touch was the first bottle of perfume that I, I was able to buy myself. And, um, I, I just fell in love with it, and I've been in love with it ever since. Mm -hmm. I, and the funny thing is, I just bought it in like November. I, I like, I haven't worn it in over. I haven't worn it in like five or six years. Oh, I got a question for you, and I'm just being nosy. How many <laughs> bottles? How many bottles you got in your collection? Outside of the telephone. Uh huh. It's literally just Burberry Touch. What? Yeah. <laughs> What? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Burberry Touch, and I have Bur somebody gave me, um, like one of my family members gave me Burberry London. Um, so you got two fragrances. Yeah, outside of the Telefrau, I, I, I wear my own stuff. I get but, but own yeah, stuff. that's obvious. That's obvious. <laughs> I don't know. I just in my mind, I guess I assumed that you had like this big collection, like like you know, like a wine cellar, like you know. I don't know, but I yeah, I would definitely wear your own stuff. But wow, that's crazy! You only have two two fragrances, huh? Two. <laughs> wow. I used to have. A, I no. The reason why is I used to have a lot of fragrances, and over time, you know, I just kind of like really like my skill just sharpened. Where just like I have a, you know, I wear a single ingredient sometimes. Like I'll just mm -hmm. wear amber, or just like cherry or something like that I do a lot of experimentation yeah and it's probably a good thing too i guess pam said it makes sense because he started because he's not happy with what was out there yeah and i would think wearing other fragrances probably would throw off your throw your game off in a way you know yeah yeah so that way you it's more authentic to you what you're creating and it doesn't smell like any anything else yeah and, and you yeah. know what too and, and another thing too is you know i'm designing for people like i do custom fragrances as well i don't, I don't really talk too much about that but we do offer custom consultations as well okay so i wear my clients fragrances sometimes you know yeah like, to test it out yeah i test it out and like it's like my way of support even though i created the fragrance it's like my way of like staying connected with them like i wear their stuff yeah i might have to give me a custom fragrance made i'm so wishy-washy <laughs> you know i'm so wishy-washy i know that i'm a gourmand lover i know that um but i love the heavy notes too like oud i love incense uh i love patchouli you know, I don't know. It had to definitely be something that I could like wear all the time, you know? Mm. Oh, wait. You created a scent called Cuddle Buddy? <laughs> so, so my client, his name is Hashim. 
um, that he, he we we did craft that scent. I crafted that fragrance for him. Yeah, I've I've actually worn. I, you know, I've been wearing his fragrance a lot actually. You know, okay. I, I, like I love my client stuff. Like I'm like, yo, hold on, I like it. You know, I wear this stuff. So what do they do? So do you you do like a consultation and you ask them what what notes they like or what smells they like? So it's a pretty it's a pretty cool process that we have. It's literally three steps. So the first step really is me diving into their personality and their childhood. So mm. asking questions about how they grew up, how their parents were, who raised whoever raised them and so forth. And we go into the teen years, and we finally get into adulthood. So okay. that's like the, the, the first part. Um, amongst that, we also have like I take like a personality test, fragrance personality test. Ah, so, so that's there's the first the thing. Can I Google that a fragrance personality a test? Um, you can look it up. The one I have is pretty different though. Okay. Yeah, because I use some wills, and you're like, what in the world's going on? So. Okay. Um, it's, it's a pretty a, a different process. Um, I, you know, I hope you are. But um, that's the first part is that fragrance personality test and your own personality based on your story. Second mm -hmm. part is within a few weeks, we get shipped out to you samples based off of what we felt is your story in, in, a, in a bottle of perfume. Okay. So we literally encapsulate your story into that bottle of perfume along not just with your personality but what you want people to feel uh -huh. so we take that and we send out three samples to you and out of the three samples you choose either one two or three and whatever you choose becomes your personal fragrance so let's say you choose number two that's not that's your fragrance okay in this process we've actually really made it we're streamlined now like we can do this virtually interesting so, yeah prior before we you know because of covid it's made a lot of changes and it's cool because we were actually doing it virtually before covid even started but we're doing it virtually now and these are like an hour to an hour and a half sessions that can okay remote i i think i'm gonna look into that i would like i would like to see what i smell like in a perfume that would be very interesting. Look, somebody said, oh, Keetra said, sign me up. It's cool, right? Somebody said that sounds really cool. I think that's amazing to have your own fragrance, you know, designed especially for you, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got you to gotta think about it like this. Like, your fragrance has the ability to implant memories. Definitely. So if you have, let's say you were married or you have children or you know, you have family, whatever. We all have family. Your fragrance becomes a marker. Like, for example, you rem do you remember a perfume that your mom, you know, I know you say your mom is late, you know, God bless her soul. No, she's alive. Her mom oh, okay. is. Yeah. So okay. um, the very first, like, a fragrance that I would associate with my mom is Halston. Halston. That, you know, the Halston. She actually, funny thing of it is, when she bought it, I begged her that day. And I was a little girl. I begged her. I was like, I want one, too. I want one, too. And she bought me one. And I was really surprised. I mean, I couldn't wear it because it was so boombastic. And so, you know, back then, it was just, it wasn't the thing for a little girl to wear. But it's the whole thought that she actually bought it for me that was crazy. Because I was just messing around. I didn't think she was going to buy it. Yeah. But Halston, yeah. Halston is, is one of the fragrances I associate with her. I don't know. I would want to smell like that, though. Yeah, yeah. No, but it reminds you of your mom. Right, yeah. Definitely. So when you think about that, when a customer creates a... I'm going to answer that question in a second, Keetra. I see your question. Um, when a customer creates a custom perfume, that literally becomes something that their family remembers them by. Yes. You know, so it's, it's bigger than just, oh, it's a bottle of perfume. It's your scent. Mm -hmm. And to answer the question Keetra has is, do you duplicate it? We don't duplicate fragrances for anybody else but the client. So let's say, for example, like you just want one bottle for yourself. You can do that. But if you also want to do resale, 
we can set that up as well. So it really goes by your own needs, whether it's for resale or for personal. Wow. Because I was, I was sitting here thinking that, like, if y'all created a fragrance for me and it really took off, would you guys be able to handle the production? <laughs> would you guys be able to handle the production? <laughs> it probably would be, like, an exclusive we, thing. Maybe, like, maybe like, maybe, like, 500 bottles. Make it real place. exclusive, you know? Absolutely. Because I'm telling you, if when it happens my perfume would definitely be made by a black brand I'm, I'm just saying it because my people are talented my people talented they need to be put on a map they need to be put on a map because some of the fragrances i've been smelling right now from black brands are off the chain and a part of me feels bad that i've I'm just now getting into black brands, black perfume brands. And it's a lot of talent out there. A lot. Yes. It really is. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I, I want to give them a shout out as well. You know, uh, uh, give a shout out to, what is it, Mr. Chris Classic. He's one of them. He's another real well-known perfumer. My man, Sean Crenshaw of Ovation Perfumes. Yeah. Shout out to him as well. Uh, we have Ty Bahani. I've seen her stuff. She has a great brand as well. I mean, it's, it's a lot of them. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. But I see them and I celebrate their greatness. Oh, yeah. I celebrate their greatness. Yeah. I'm definitely going, like I said, this is... This is my year of learning. I think I've spent a lot of time buying, but this is my year of learning and really zoning in on what I like and not just talking about it. Like I really want to know the ins and outs. I want to know how it starts, what this is, what that is. Like I want to know, you know, all those things. You know, it's one thing to have a collection you know, but what do you know? What do you know about the fragrances that you have in your collection? That's a whole different, that's a whole different story, you know? Oh, also, uh, I'm answering uh, Pam Jordan's question. There you go. That was another brand. Oh, she said she needs, she's going to look into it. Yeah, that's, yeah. so that's, that's a, um, Oh, she said, say the last name again. Tabahani. I, I, I hope I'm, I, I, may be, I may be pronouncing that wrong. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. But yeah, that's another brand that has a pretty good message. And um, yeah, I, mean, I support well, it. I have, I have enjoyed this live. Me too. I've really, we got to, we got to come on and do it again. You know, we'll we'll get back together and uh, do a follow up on the new things that you've come out with and all that good stuff. Definitely okay. gonna do a follow up video. And again, I appreciate you so much for doing this, coming on live and answering our questions and telling us your story. I feel like I know you so much better now. You know that than I did like a few minutes ago, but. Thank you. Uh, Courtney said, do it again. Yeah, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again, for sure. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Thank, thank you for having me. And I appreciate yeah. all of you for attending here. Anytime. Don't forget, y'all, the code. I'm going to, when I save the video, I will put the code in to save 10% on any, it's on all fragrances, right? Yes. Okay. Everything. Yep. Everything, everything on, online. You yep. get 10% off. So it's Amanda 10. So if you're wanting to buy, now is the time because Monday, it, Monday at midnight, Monday morning, sometime Monday morning. Uh, uh, Monday at midnight, yes. Monday at midnight is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. All right. Thank you, sir, so much. Thank you guys for t uh, tuning in. Courtney, Pam, Keitra. All of y'all, congratulations, you, Sweet Sensation 67. Let me know how you like your fragrances, too. All right. Thank you.
Blessings on blessings. All right. Bye. Bye bye.